Miles motherfucking Turner. Obviously, no uh, Damien Lillard, no Giannis, so it's really hard uh, to really be excited about this series overall, but I'm really happy for Indiana, so uh, Indy takes the 3-1 lead, Miles Turner dominates, they keep pushing the pace, they've shot the lights out from the three-point line, and I think, you know, some of it is just how fast they play and the Bucks not being able to keep up with them. So it's great offense rather than, I would say, bad defense. But it's the youth against the old, right? And with no Giannis in there and now even Dame in there, they don't have enough shot making to match uh, the Pacers. And Miles Turner has been sensational. He's been shooting lights out. Tyrese was really aggressive today. He shot pretty well. Obi Toppin has been able to give the Pacers something off the bench. Now he, he's been really aggressive. And with the pace they play, he's been able to get some wide open three-pointers, wide open layups, some dunks even. So that was awesome. Aaron Neesmith is a sniper. We know that. Pascal still, you know, does a little bit of everything, even though his three ball wasn't there today. And Andrew Nemhard has been my favorite player in this series. He's been defending like a dog, uh, doing a little bit of everything. The shot's been falling for him. So shout out Andrew Nemhard, man. I'm really impressed by him in this in this series overall. And while for the pay Bucks, obviously, they had to resort to Danilo Gallinari minutes, who, I mean, he made some tough shots, so shout out to Gallo. Uh, they had to resort to more AJ Green, more Pat Connaughton, more Andre Jackson, and unfortunately, AJ Green and Pat Connaughton are horrible on defense, and against this fast-paced Pacers team, it's even worse. And Andre Jackson, you know, I thought he was really good. I think he should get uh, maybe even more minutes if you can force them out there somewhere. I mean, Pat Beverly played 20 minutes. I think that's 20 too many. <laughs> I know he's annoying and I know he, you know, does fairly well shooting, but I think it's not been worth the squeeze with Pat Bev. Then you had Malik Beasley obviously starting. He shot the lights out, but he's a horrible defender. So I guess he gave all those 20 points away on the on the other end, where, like I keep saying, the pace is so fast and the Bucks are left to always switch, then left on by scramble, and then you have a wide open Aaron with wide open Tyrese Halliburton, then there's wide open Miles Turner, who is a sniper, and they still can go out to him, because they're just playing that fast, and Brook Lopez obviously can move as fast to Miles Turner on the perimeter, so Miles Turner is locked and loaded for that three ball, and it's tough, but shout out to Brook Lopez, he did show up today, uh, after what I would say a really bad series so far from him, he did show up, and did fairly well, uh, Bobby Portis, eh, got ejected, just a dumb thing from him, and he's had himself quite disappointing playoffs so far, I would I would argue, I thought he was going to be the X Factor, which could help the Bucks make this, you know, or win this series if they were to, but he's been, he's been tough, man, he's been tough, and he got ejected when they were already down their two best players, just Dumb, just dumb. And Chris Middleton was really good once again, but he got also chipped up in this game, which just makes me sad because he's a dog and he's a gamer. But it's just not enough against this fast pace in the offense, man. They just don't have enough defense. Even when the offense was pretty great, the Pacers barely turned the ball over and they shot lights out from the three-point line, which, to be fair, I don't think... Uh, the contesting or the defense of the triple line from the Bucks was still great, so it makes sense that they shot this lights out, but it's still incredibly impressive. They were locked in from the three-point line, no doubt about it. Uh, can they close it out in Milwaukee? Uh, there is a chance that Dame and Giannis play, but we'll have to wait and see about that. And I mean, it would be obviously good for the Pacers if they could end this in five, but if Giannis and Dame plays, you expect the Bucks to at least make this uh, you know, make, make the Pacers close it out in at home, even though we don't know, I don't know how Dame healthy can really be with that Achilles injury and how healthy Giannis can really be with his uh, calf or Achilles injury. So, I don't know, man. Uh, I think it would be, you know, best for the Bucks to just kind of uh, let it play out how it is. And, I mean, if your other guys besides Dame and Giannis could somehow make a comeback, you'll be happy if not. Everything went, you know, against you this season in a way in terms of injuries, even though there were some problems with Dame and Giannis together. Before that, Dame obviously has had just a tough, tough, uh, tough year off the field, which what can you do, man? That's life. And 
even though they have more money and they're obviously playing basketball for a living doesn't mean they can have bad years or doesn't mean they you know basketball is only the, the everything and uh, nothing else affects your mental health or anything right it's just it is what it is uh, I I don't know man the Bucks have some issues in their roster and I think Brook Lopez has been outdated I think Giannis and Dame have not fit together as we have thought about but uh but but something just doesn't never felt right and we'll have to wait and see what they do about it at the end of the day thank you all for listening i'll be back for game four as always be kind to us and to others as always as always